Our next guest had international success with songs like Shout, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, and Sowing the Seeds of Love. Over a decade has passed since, and now Tears for Fears is making an unexpected return with a new album. The new album is called Everybody Loves a Happy Ending. Joining me now from Tears for Fears are Roland Orzabal and Kurt Smith. Welcome to the program. Thank okay. you. An unexpected return, or was it uh, bound to happen at some point anyway? Well, it was an option. Always an option, right? Always an option, and uh, it just seemed, uh, after nine years of not talking to each other, it seemed like uh, it was about time that maybe we got back on the horse. In the intervening period, you both pursued solo careers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Was there uh, an aspect of, of that solo side of things that, that uh, made you want to get back together? Well, I mean, I mean, I think that the joy of doing solo work is obviously you have 100% control, but the um the pressures in that meaning that you know you actually have to be in charge of everything are definitely heavier um there's a certain comfort in having other people in the studio that's for sure yeah uh tell tell us uh, our audience what we're going to hear musically i think back to songs from the big chair and i, I think of big melodies big mm. sounding music um what do we hear in this well, it's, album? There are big melodies, but we certainly weren't going to get back together again and make a fragile, um, electronic, 80s sounding record. Um, it's far more of a 70s and 60s sounding thing with very, very natural um, instruments and songwriting. The first song, Everybody Loves a Happy Ending, title track, uh, starts off almost sounding a little Beatles-y once, uh, once the lyrics started. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously one of, one of many influences of ours. Um, again, when you sit down in a room to try and write songs, when there's more than one person involved, and in, in that case there's three of us, there's myself and Roland, and a guy called Charlton Pettis who co-wrote a, a lot of the album with us and co-produced it. And obviously the, the things you have in common are the ones you gravitate towards, and uh, the Beatles were one of those influences that we all had in common. Obviously there are a lot more influences during the course of the album, but that's obviously a strong one. Your fan base, uh, my sense is, is still very much there. Uh, so they must be thrilled that you're that you're back together uh, again for this album. Uh, will there be a, a, a much of a tour in support of it? There'll be some touring, yes. I mean, we we start. I think it's October 23rd uh, in the U.S. We're touring for about four or five weeks, um, going to most major cities. Was the creative process uh, uh, easy uh, once you came back together, or did it take some time to sort of? Uh no, it was easy. It was? Yeah, I think it's uh, all those years of writing songs has, has made the whole job just a joy, really. Um, if you guys have seen Donnie Darko. You know mm. Gary Jules yeah. uh, covered your song Mad World uh, for the song. The, 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 f the film itself has become a bit of a <coughs> cult following favorite out there. Um, were, were you pleased with his take on your, on your song? Yeah, extremely pleased. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great when someone does it um, so well. You know, I mean, I think that you know, a lot of the time you hear cover versions you know, and you're not the biggest fans of that band or particularly the version they've done. But I think Gary uh, and Michael Andrews really managed to make the song better, which was pretty amazing. Ruined it for us, of course. Ruined yeah. it. Yeah. Well, now we have to perform it live and we tried it, you know, in the old way. and uh, Slow it down a little bit. We did. Uh, slow we it down basically a did. We slowed it down a lot. <laughs> Uh, it was like, this sounds really fast to us. Why is that? You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've been listening to that other version. What do you make of where the music industry is today? We're just talking to Bruno about everything from, uh, you know, Britney Spears and, and all the other very, uh, various artists that are out trying to sell albums today. What do you make of uh, or where the industry as a, as a whole is? Well, I mean, it's a little, it's a little tougher now because obviously conglomerates own more of the industry than they used to. Um, but musically, I, I feel it's pretty much the same as it's always been. I mean, it's really down to your personal taste. You know, for me, in whatever era you, you care to think about, a lot of music is, um, you know, I don't like particularly, but like about 20% I do. You know, a lot of it's disposable, um, but I think it's always been that way. You know? You know, I think that when we go and record um, as artists, I think we really don't think about anyone else making music or listening to other music particularly. I think you have to be kind of quite blinkered about it and just go about trying to make the best record you can at that point in time. Do you think the Internet is the answer for distribution? I was on the iTunes website last yeah. night seeing your entire catalog was there. No, it's fabulous. It certainly helps uh, um, because of, you know, there's a more of a direct connection to your fans. And is that what you find also when you perform publicly? Is that uh, you're able to 
mean, yeah. you're reaching them directly, but does that necessarily translate into selling albums? Well, certainly when you're playing live, it helps to have a response from an audience. Um, you know, it can get a little bit jaded playing to yourself all the time. To, yeah, to play with this. Yeah, yeah whichever one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, the online thing definitely makes everything a lot more direct. You know, I mean, you get to answer questions directly from fans and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, it certainly expands your horizons somewhat. The album is called Everybody Loves a Happy Ending. Kurt Smith and Roland Orzabal. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank Tears you. for Fears. And if you don't own songs from the big chair, go pick up that one as well.